Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Sally Turner, joined here with reporter Alan Huffman to discuss Syria and the dangers for journalists visiting. Okay, Alan, the war has been going for years now. There has been dozens of beheadings and often deaths. So why are journalists still going, still wanting to report from such a dangerous area? Well, you know, the, the late war photographer Tim Hetherington once said that he went to war to try to explain the world to the world. And I think some journalists go to war zones because they just want the adrenaline rush. You know, it's an exciting life and all that. But, but some of them just want to know what's really going on in the world and, and know about the lives of people that are in trying situations. And then they want to come back and share that with everyone else who otherwise wouldn't know. Syria is just an extremely difficult situation about war coverage because there have been so many kidnappings and murders and imprisonments. And, and it has driven a lot of, of journalists away. And, but I'm sure some of them have actually been inspired to go by the efforts to suppress media coverage. And they, they just want to overcome that. You know, it's a high price that we pay for the news. And those people are out there. They're determined to get it. Absolutely. And the government does want to suppress the, the media coverage, silence it completely. So how do we trust what we're getting is truth? It re you really have to consider the source, you know, uh, just something that it is forwarded on Facebook or something. I mean, it's true in any case, right, on the, on the Internet. You never know. I mean, things show up and you think you can believe it and it's all staged or whatever. A lot is being staged in Syria and there are, there are, there's confusion about who actually has kidnapped some of these journalists. You know, there's 15 journalists, Western journalists alone, who are unaccounted for now. And in some cases, we don't even know which side has them because they will try to make it appear that the other side captured them. And their, their goal, the government's goal, is just to limit media coverage completely. And in other cases, it's to distort it or to control it. But the only way to be sure, honestly, at this stage, is to go to a reputable site and hope that, it, that whatever you're reading or watching or looking at has been properly vetted. And there are different types of journalists going to Syria, some freelancers, some with big organizations, some with just, you know, their cell phones. But what are the qualities you think a good war correspondent needs in order to safely report from somewhere like Syria? Well, the, the answer to the second part of your question is, I think, empathy and a bit of excitability and curiosity are the main things. I mean, you know, a lot of people, the, the Bang Bang Club, you know, the, the film about war photographers, I think that's a small section of, of, of war journalists uh, that go there just for the thrill. I mean, that's certainly a part of it. But I think you have to want to know what people are going through that the rest of the world doesn't know about. And you have to be really curious. And, and you do have to be driven to want to do these things. But the, the, as far as the kinds of journalists who are doing that in Syria, most of them are freelancers because the way that journalism works now most big organizations are not sending people into war zones. We're very fortunate at Abbey Times that we have Rashid Alas, who is in Damascus. I mean, it's, it's, it's very fortunate for us. And she has, is writing for us about what is happening there. And she's from Syria originally. But that's really rare now. Mostly you have freelancers who are just out there on their own and don't have a support network. and. When they disappear, it may be days before anyone even knows about it. And often we won't hear about it for weeks because it, they don't publicize it, hoping that they can work through it. So, you know, I guess the, the, the bottom line is just, you know, you have to be committed to wanting to share these people's stories, whether they're civilians who were caught up in the conflict or, or soldiers or rebels. You, you know, you want to share the stories of what what is happening to these people. And, and for example, in Tim Hetherington's case, you know, I'm not a war journalist. I, I went to Liberia during their civil war when I was researching a book. And then I went to Libya researching a book about Tim, because Tim was killed in Libya during the, the, the revolution there. And I was writing a biography about him. And, and so most of what I know, I, I learned through him vicariously. And you know, he was on a mission. He wanted to tell the world what is really going on. There's no better place to find that out than in a war zone. You really see what people are made of. And you know, it cost him his life. And unfortunately, that's going to continue to be the case for other journalists in Syria. It's the deadliest place for reporters anywhere now. 
So speaking of Tam and you know all you've learned about Syria, do you think the biggest quality perhaps you have to have is going in there knowing that you could possibly die for the story and that willingness? I do think you have to, yeah, I do. I think you have to commit. Everyone, you know, Tim knew uh, that the possibility existed that one day that he was gonna, that town, as Sebastian Younger described it, is on the map for everyone who is a war correspondent. They may not even know who it is, know where it is, but that town is out there that if you stick with it long enough, it's gonna catch up with you. And uh, Tim was well aware of that, um, but he, you know, obviously we, he didn't expect it to happen so soon. He was, he was you know, 40, so. So young. And you aren't a war correspondent, but you are a journalist. So would you go to Syria? No, not now. Um, I, not even probably before the kidnappings got to the, the level that they are right now. I mean, you know, if there's so many people missing, it's, it's kind of crazy to go there now. I mean, I, I don't think you could ever advise anyone to go there. And yet you don't want to limit the news that is, that is available to people about what's happening. It's a real difficult situation for journalists to know, you know, because you are, if you go into Syria, people are looking for you to kidnap you and hold you for ransom or whatever, not, you know, from different groups. I mean, you drive into town and there's, every, everybody in town has a different way that they want to use you and a lot of them want to do it in very bad ways. So I couldn't ever go there under those circumstances and I could never advise anyone to go there. I'm glad that there are some brave people, including Russia, who, who are there, because otherwise we would have no idea what was going on. We wouldn't have seen what was happening with those chemical weapons and, and all of that. I mean, you're, it takes it's some really brave people to stick it out in a situation where you're not only in danger of being shot or bombed or gassed, but everybody wants to kidnap you, you know? And so, you know, hats off to anyone who would be there now, but it, it wouldn't be me. Yeah, agreed, absolutely. Thank you, Alan. Thank you.